and just kind of remove. Oh, oh gosh. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I've dried them off. So now I'm going to go in with my setting motion. And just, I mean, I know you guys are all really smart, but just so you know, we're not adding a tint. <laughs> we're just doing the setting lotion on this one. So I'm just cleaning off my spoolie. And again, two pumps per eyebrow. So one, two, and we're just going to brush it right in. At this stage, we're just gonna wanna get that product on there. It doesn't have to be perfect because we'll go in about halfway through and we will fix it up a little bit. And then one, two, this side. Question just came in. Mm -hmm. If you use a fresh mm -hmm. I did not with this because it's the same client. And what I did was I removed the product and then I dipped it in some water to make sure that all that product is, is gone. And then I haven't touched the spoolie with anything else. I've just pumped the pump right onto it. So I still use the same. I use one spoolie for the entire set. Um, again, just to cut down on waste. So I'm setting my timer for five minutes. And then I'm going to go ahead and put my cellophane back on. And then you want to be careful you're not using the same side. Oh, gosh. I'm using the same side that we used beforehand. You want to flip it over. And we're going to throw that on there. And then, so while this is sitting, we're going to go in and now we're going to glue. So we're going to grab our white lifting tool and our glue. So I, because I'm quite comfortable with it, again, you guys do not want to do all these three services at once if you're not comfortable with these services. Make sure that you're definitely able to pump these guys out like no tomorrow before you do this. So I like to go about halfway up the rod and then I pull these lashes up. And then before it gets too sticky, I grab my Y comb and I even them out. And you want to make sure you get all those little gaps in there. And then I like to pull up a little bit and pull down to make sure none of those bottom lashes are stuck. So I just kind of release those bottom lashes. So that's where I just, I kind of stopped using the under eye pads for this stage because I found that they were kind of getting in the way. But again, it's all your preference, right? It's all what you're comfortable with. And then you want to make sure that these little ones on the side are going straight up. We don't want them to be fanned out. It's kind of weird because you'd think that you would want them to be fanned out, but we want them to go straight up to kind of get that nice fanned out look once the rods are off. We're going to go in with our Y comb. I'm just going to 
go over quickly and just kind of fix any little areas that need to be pulled up. So what I like to do is I like to put a little bit of glue at the top so you're not touching the lash. And then I take it with my tool and I kind of drag it over. Okay, so we're keeping a time. I am a time. So I'm just going to go in and put my wide palm. And we're just going to use our Y comb and get that position in there. Um, lotion off your Y comb. If you want to use two Y combs, you can, but I just dip mine in water and, and give it a little wipe with my Kleenex. Okay. So I'm going to go over to the other eye for a second, just until my timer goes off. Again, I'm going to go about halfway. Sorry, guys. My head bumped it. Okay. So now my timer's gone off, so I'm going to just finish what I'm doing here quickly because I've got the glue on there, and then I'm going to leave it because it doesn't matter if we're leaving it at this stage. So you just don't want to make sure, you want to make sure you're not doing the lotions at this stage because you don't want to be leaving anything too long because you're still working on something. So just one lotion step at a time, so either lamination or lash lift. And then we're going to apply some water again we want to make sure that the product's not activated and we get it all off So you can see she's a little bit irritated around the brow and we kind of anticipated that because I could see she was going a little bit red even just from the friction of me cleansing her eyebrows. So that's okay. So I always just tell my client, like you might be a little bit red for the next half an hour or so, but it will go down. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So at any point, if they feel any burning or anything, you just want to stop the service and just tell them that you're sorry you can't be completed because we don't want to mess with any reactions or anything like that. Okay. So now that we've got the lotions off, go ahead and talk about we can complete our lash lift here now. So I'm going to go back with the glue, the white comb, and then go back to our lash lift step.
Okay, so now we're going to use my silicone brush. And you only need one pump per eye. So we're going to do one pump. That was half a pump, actually. You get quite a bit out of it. So that was about half a pump. And we're going to apply it about halfway up. Right where you're seeing that curl, we want it right where, because we're going to break down right where it's curling so that we get that lift. So we're going to just apply it here, and then we're going to set our timer right after we apply this one eye. And then we'll apply the next eye, because we do not want to over-process these lashes. So for her, I'm going to do six minutes, which is our average, average time. Depending on how hard you're finding it to get up on the rod, there's somebody, um, their eyelashes are really stubborn and you can't get them up onto the rod easily, then that's a telltale that you're going to want to use seven minutes with the lotions probably because they're very strong and healthy. Okay. All right, so we've got that lotion on now. set. And so while we're sitting here, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up my next step. So I'm going to put in equal parts of our um, PBD free lash tint to equal parts number two lotion, our setting lotion. And I'm going to let that sit for a little bit because we want it to activate. Put in two pumps of setting lotion, and I'm going to mix it. And I'm also, I just find it helps a little bit is if we add a drop or two of hydrogen peroxide to this mix. It just helps bring out that tint. Because it is a PVD-free tint, you're not going to get that jet, jet, blue, black tint. Um, and then it also, we found, it activates over time. So the longer it's on the lashes, once you've removed everything, it'll continue to tint the lashes. So you'll notice, like, when we take it off right away, that it's just kind of, you know, it's a little bit darker. But then by the time they leave, they'll be almost really black. So I'm going to sit them aside and let that sort of activate. And now I'm going to start with our head server. So I'm going to use on her today, we're going to use number four. So I'm going to mix up my number four, and I'm actually going to throw in a little bit of number five on her. She is quite dark. And when you're doing that after the lamination, just keep in mind, it might tip the skin a little bit, but not nearly as much as it would if we were doing just straight henna. And then if it does keep the skin, you're not, it's not going to last quite as long. So I'm looking at my time. I still have three and a half minutes. So I'm going to go get some hot water from my hand to mix up. Okay. So Okay, so I've got my henna, and I've added my hot water, and I'm making it into a nice creamy consistency. Okay, so again, I'm just keeping an eye on my time, because the more important thing right now is that lotion. It's not really the eye now. So I've got two minutes. So I'm just going to throw... 
our tint. And you can see how roughly I'm doing it just to get the product on there. Does that feel okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, and then I'm going to take a Q-tip and I'm going to dampen it a little bit and I'm just going to go and kind of trace my line and make my shape. So now when you're doing a henna over the lamination, everything's kind of been open and everything's kind of been already compromised, so it's going to take a lot of time. So we just kind of want to keep an eye on it and then it's choosing a color depending on how dark the hair is like with this client we can afford to go a little bit darker on her um, but you want to you want to look and try and pick a color that's just slightly lighter than what you would normally do, just because it is going to activate a lot quicker. And those hairs are going to grab onto it. So we want to basically leave this on for about 10 minutes. Again, it varies for each client. And then going over it with our Tracing out our line. Okay, so my primer is going. I'm just going to quickly finish this up. All right. Lotion. So I'm going to. Be careful not to pull the lotion up past the tip of the lash because we don't want to over process those tips. So you're just kind of like pulling up and out. What I love the question is you keep the hairs above the brush straight from tracing, so opposed to being over. Um, I kind of stick them over a little bit. You can kind of see when I used my Q tip, I kind of pulled everything down. So it's all being tinted. Um, I'm we're not I'm not a big fan of um, trimming the laminated hair because as soon as that lamination kind of um, comes out over time, you're going to be left with all these gaps. So I'll kind of show you how I like to style them at the very end of the service. Um, if you're trimming them, I mean, obviously, if you have like the big curly cues that you like really need to get rid of, then for sure, go ahead. Um, but I really, really, really strongly recommend don't trim the brow hairs at the end. You can just style them with our brow balm because you're, it's just not going to look good after five. Oh, there you're going to be left with all these gaps. So I'm removing the lotion and I'm taking my Q-tip with water just a little bit, not too much because we don't want to lift the glue yet. Just enough to stop the activation. Okay, so now I'm going to go with of tint and setting lotion. And actually, sorry, before I do that, take my underarm gel pads, and now I'm going to place them underneath her lashes because I want to make sure that we're not getting this tint on her skin, and we kind of want to tint those bottom lashes as well. So I'm going to throw this on here, and then I'm going to use my lift tool to make sure that these lashes are pulled up over top so we can tint them. Okay, 
So now I'm going to take the tint and we're going to place it on the entire lash this time, not just where it's curling because we want to tint all the lashes. I find if you're tinting the lashes, if you're not tinting the lashes, you can leave the setting lotion on for five minutes. But if you are tinting the lashes, I find six minutes great. It just gives it that extra pop that it needs. And then I'm just going to brush the tips of the bottom lashes here to make sure we get them nice and tinted as well. All right, I'm going to set my timer again for six minutes. And then I'm going to eye. And then I'm going to show you a trick with the tape. So her her um, lashes are pretty glued down still. They're pretty good. But if you're finding that, like, at this stage, some of them are starting to lift a little bit and the glue is kind of given away, maybe you've used a little bit too much water, I'm going to show you a nice little hack that we can do to kind of ensure that they stay glued down. Does that feel okay? Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. So now I'm going to remove some of the henna. So I want to take a look. So just that first sort of like centimeter, half centimeter in the middle. I'm just going to take some water with my cotton round and pull. So they're looking pretty good. As you can see, we're not really going to get that stain on the skin, but we know that, right? Because we're doing the lamination. So when I'm talking to my client and I'm asking them what they're looking for, if they're looking for more of like that microbladed laminated look, then I suggest doing the lamination and the henna. If they're looking for something to more fill in their eyebrow and they need that stain on the skin to kind of make it look more full, then I would just say, you know, the lamination might not be for you if we go straight for the henna, or you could do the lamination and then have them come back in a couple of days to do the henna. Once all the red is going to go off of the, the eyebrows, it just isn't going to stay the skin if you're doing it all at once. So again, I'm taking my same spoolie, it's the same client. I'm just going to brush make sure they stay in place nicely and again you can see she's a little bit red it's not really getting worse it's just staying the same and again that's okay because we know that this client's very sensitive and it'll go down in about half an hour okay so I'm going to show you my tape half now I'm going to show you show you what we're doing so I'm taking my pink tape that I get in my kit and because we've got the lotion on the lashes, the tape's not going to stick to the lashes. So don't worry that when we pull it off, it's going to pull their lashes off. We're good. You want to make it long enough that you can stick it on either side. So we're going to just pull, push down on the lashes and stick it on one side. You don't want it too tight because you don't want the product to go up in their eye. And then we're going to stick it on the nose. And that's going to ensure that all those lashes stay up on the bottom. And then we're going to do the same for this side. So again, make sure it's long enough that you're able to stick it because it's not going to stick to the lashes. And then we're just going to let that sit. Does that feel okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. And always ask your client to make sure it's not getting in their, uh, their eyes at all because you don't want to push it down and have it seep underneath into their eyes. Okay. So minutes left. I want to leave this on and we still have the, um, the lift going. So I'm just going to sit and clean up the station so that I'm ready when I have my next client. I'm kind of nice and clean and um, I've got most of the work done so I can just bring her in right away. If you have any questions, it's probably a great time to ask because I'm not as distracted.
So I'm just cleaning my brushes with my alcohol and I'm just putting them back in their drawers. Everything that I don't need anymore, I'm just cleaning it and getting it ready for the next client. Can everybody hear me okay? You just either do a thumbs up or just type in there that you can hear me. It's kind of hard with the mask. It's really muffled. And we've got about a minute left with the lashes. So if you find that your client, you're ready to take the hen off at this point, go ahead and take it off. I want to just leave it on her until I'm done with the lash lift. But you can, if you feel like you have to take it off because it's going a little bit too dark, feel free to take it off sooner. So I hope it all makes sense in the manual, the step-wise. It's just hard to write it out because you don't know what step you're going to be at when you need to go back to the service that you're working on, right? So the only advice I have is don't start anything that needs to be timed together. So you want to make sure you're really done with that brow lamination before you start the, the timing on the lash lift. Okay, I'm going to go with my timer. So here I'll show you. So I'm going to pull, I'm going to do this one first because it's on top. I'm going to pull that just straight off like that. So it's not stuck to anything, not stuck to her lashes or anything like that. So this one's stuck to the iPad. There we go. Okay. So we're going to now remove by pulling everything up. And you can see now that those lashes are almost completely lifted off with the glue now. So it's easy removal. And then we want to use quite a bit of water because we want to get any of that excess glue off. Make sure underneath. Okay, and then while it's sitting with water on it, we'll work on the next one. And when you're working with the tint, your silicone brush is not going to stay nice and clean. It's just the way it is. It's going to stain the brush. So eventually your brush will turn like brush color, like brown. But as long as you're keeping it clean, it's okay. Okay, so now I'm going to take my wet Q-tip that I was using, a little bit more water, and I'm just going to lightly brush those lashes up and see which ones pop off and which ones are not, and then you just add a little bit more water, and eventually they'll just all kind of pop off the rod. All right, and then I'm going to take it underneath with the water, and I'm just going to roll Q-tip and it'll just pop off. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm going to get you to tilt your head to the side for me. I'm going to do a wash here. Uh, can you zoom a little screen? Let's move on to this side. Just so they can see. Perfect. Can you guys see that? No? Okay, so I'm going to do a water bath just to ensure that we get everything out of the eyes before she opens her eyes. So we got no stain or anything like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, a piece of um, Kleenex. And this is dry quite a bit, so you're not really going to smudge it too much, so it's okay. And plus, we're going to take it off right after anyway. So I'm going to just put my silicone bowl right up against her skin and I'm going to take a cotton round or a cotton ball or whatever you have and then we're just going to give it a wash bath so just a few probably like five or six little swipe overs and then I like to wring out my cotton just so it's a little bit drier and then right away, what I like to do is go to the cascade and put those lashes back in place. You don't want them to stay out of place too long. So I'll get you to put your eyes on up there. So I'm going to brush them back up. Make sure they're all where they need to be. Okay. And then we're going to go and do the other side. And okay. Okay. Yeah. I a little bit. Yeah. Oh, I'm thinking wrong. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay. I'm ahead of myself. All right. We're going to use a little bit more water. These ones should pop off really easily now because they've been sitting there for a little bit. Uh, Ginny, I wanted to ask a question. I find myself being in the U.S. a little bit of afraid of the henna. I really want to try it and be one of the only salons in the area that does henna. But I'm really concerned about how much I, like. I love that she can just rinse it and there seems to be no issues whatsoever. Well, the lashes are not henna. The lashes are our PVD tint. The henna okay, is our tint. Pardon? Okay. So it is tint on the lashes then? On the lashes, it is. yeah, it is. We do not do henna on the lashes because... Okay, um, because that's really scary. Yeah. It's okay. too no granular. Like it, so yeah. if it gets into the eye, it could scratch. So we don't, we stay away from the henna on the lashes. So they have to get the brown. Okay, perfect. Thank you yeah. for <laughs> For Thank sure. You. Okay, so now we're going to just remove the henna here. And you can see it's quite like because we've left it for quite a bit it's a little bit dried up in there so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to dip my spoolie in some water and just give it a little gentle brush and that will kind of remove everything underneath without having to scrub so hard And I just hold the cotton ball down at the bottom so it doesn't drip all the way down her face. 
if it's if you're using quite a bit of water. I'm going to go in one more time with a clean cotton round because that one's quite dirty. Make sure to get everything off. So I'm going to give my spoolie a wash of water and take a clean cleanup. I'm going to give it a good little clean out here so that it's nice and clean. And then I'm going to do my number three on my lashes. So this is our nourishing lotion. So you want to make sure you're using equal parts this. Um, to your number one and number two lotions because this is very important that the um, eyelashes rehydrate after this treatment because um, we've kind of we've done a chemical process on them and we don't want them to lose any of their health so we're going to reapply our nourishing lotion so what I like to do is I like to kind of go along the spoolie like that so that it's like a nice straight line and then I just gently brush and they're going to look kind of wet for a little bit and then I also find it kind of hardens a little bit um, so it kind of holds them into place for a little bit which is nice for the rest of the day almost but we want to make sure that we we um, give it a chance to kind of seep in there and rehydrate those lashes Again, I'm going to put a little bit on. Again, I'm not touching. Oh. <laughs> I'm not touching. Yeah. I'm put a little bit on in a line. So if you're using more than one pump, it's almost too much. It's going to weigh those lashes down and it's going to make them clump together. But if you're not using enough, they're not going to get rehydrated the way they're supposed to be. And it's just going to damage the, the lashes over time. So if you're not waxing or anything, you're basically done, but I'm going to give her a little shape and wax for her eyebrows. So first I'm going to have them all brushed up. And if you're waxing after doing an animation, you want to use a hard wax, not a soft wax. A special wax because it's going to adhere more to the hair than it will the skin. And after the lamination, you kind of compromise the skin. So you want to use a hard wax afterwards. If you're doing just straight henna and you're comfortable with a soft, with a strip wax, um you can do that however i usually always recommend the hard wax because it's just better for the skin overall Thank you. 
this is a hard wax this is all hard the la the hairs aren't going to get stuck to it so now i'm just going to brush these hairs down i'm going to wax the top The one thing with the hard wax is I do find you kind of have to tweeze a little bit more just because it doesn't really get everything's on super clean line like it is with soft wax. Okay, so I'm going to go over now. I'm going to take uh, some antiseptic or your after wax or whatever you've got that you use. Take my tweezers.
Okay, so this is where they said I don't want to trim them. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take, this is my little hack again, is our, our brow soap. Normally, you add a little bit of water to it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add about a quarter, not very much, but a quarter of a pump of dead. So you're kind of getting two in one, which is kind of fun. And then I'm going to, now I'm going to take a clean spoolie because this is where I don't want to put a dirty spoolie in our brow soap. So if you're not doing the brow soap, don't worry about it. But if you are, you want to get out a clean spoolie. And I kind of just bend it like this. And then we just kind of get that nourishing lotion to kind of release some of that soap. You don't want too much because you don't want it to be sudsy. So I'm going to apply first so we get a little bit of product on there. And if you don't want to use the brow soap, you can use just the nourishing lotion is fine too. But we want to make sure we get a little bit of that nourishing lotion on the eyebrows. So this is where we're going to style them. And what I like to do is I pull the brows into shape. So I'm not trimming them. I'm just kind of pulling them down into their shape. Because like I said, once that lamination goes away, we don't want um, any holes to be left. Because once it falls kind of back down, you're going to have these blunt ends that don't work with the eyebrow shape. So first getting the product kind of on there, styling them into place. And then we pull them before they really have a chance to set. And we pull them into their shape. I'm going to use our highlighter. So I just use the back of my brush. And I just put a little bit of product on the back of my hand. And then you want to make sure that the brush is nice and clean and nice and flat. And we're just going to put a little bit of product onto our brush. And we're just going to make a nice, soft, clean line. What I like to do is I like to make my line first and then I like to go back over and kind of pull down and soften it. So with this client, obviously she's quite red on top, but most clients they'll just kind of be red on the bottom from waxing. And so this will kind of cover that up if they have to go out and it just kind of shows them how they can style their brows. And then you can retail, um, all these products to them so you can talk about the brow soap talk about the under eye um highlighter you can talk about the nourishing lotion um and our brow pencils and all that kind of stuff too so this is a great opportunity to upsell to make a little bit more Sorry, I said nourishing lotion, but I meant our brow serums. <laughs> brow serum, the mascara that has the serum infused into it. So I put a little bit too much product in there, so I'm just pulling a little bit of it out. And just blend.
And then you can kind of just smudge the edges of it so that it's not really a blunt line. And then I'll get you to open your eyes for me. Oh, hold on. Hold on. So that's good. So we'll take our lifting. from when we did the hydrating nourishing lotion. Like I said, remember I said it gets a little bit hard. So we just didn't open up right away. So maybe get your client to open up. Mm hmm going to take a few tips of some water. Okay. All right. So there we go. So that was, I mean, a little bit longer than an hour because I think we were talking and then trying to explain stuff. But that's how you're going to do all three services in an hour. And then you can charge 175 bucks. So does anybody have any last questions um, on anything to do with the service? Okay, hold on. I'm going to untrap my phone here. You guys how, often, how often can a client come in for like a lash um, lift or tint or any of these services like without the integrity of her, you know, lashes or brows being affected? Yes. So that's a great question. We do not do these services, the lamination or the lash lift, more than every eight weeks. Every how many weeks? Or are you Sorry, more than every eight weeks. Eight weeks. Okay. Yes. Because so it should last about six to eight weeks. So you might notice they might notice a couple weeks where they're like, oh, I want to get it done sooner. But if you're doing it sooner, then it's going to compromise the lashes and they're going to start getting worse and worse and worse and more brittle and over processed and all of that. So we want to make sure that it's at least eight weeks. So what I do with my clients is I usually book them in for their full three services. And then once in between, so four weeks, I book in for another henna and wax. So okay. I'm still seeing them every four weeks. And then every other time we're adding on the lamination and the lash lift. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Do we have any other questions? And then if you want to see, this is my, um, this is how we look after. <laughs> and that's with me um, cleaning up throughout. But that's what it kind of looks like. And then what I like to do is I just grab all my other utensils. I take them to the washroom and I take my alcohol and I clean everything up. Um, and then what I do is I take all of my, I take this piece of paper and I kind of wrap it up and everything else goes in the garbage. So but yeah, so if you guys have um, any other questions, you can always email us. Um, I know Jenny is going to send out a link for your 25% off of all of our products. We've got our kits. We have our ultimate kit, which that would probably be the best um, value for you to spend that 25% off on. Uh, it comes with all three services and all the training manuals for it and everything. Um and then we also have all of our retail. So again, if you're trying to make the most of your time, like I said, at that point, um, when we're finishing up is usually when I chat to my clients about, oh, 
I'm just going to throw a little bit of our eyebrow soap on there. Have you heard of our eyebrow soap? And then nine times out of 10, they're walking out with one. Um, so we have all of those products available online. And then I think we're going to try to get a recording of this. I don't know if it actually worked or not, but we'll see. And if we do, we'll send that out for you so you can watch it over again. Um, but if that's everything, Jenny, did you want to say anything? Is she hiding? There she no, is. No, I'm here. Uh, no, I don't have anything else. Like Adele said, I'll send that email out to everybody afterwards. Um, but a big thank you to everybody for joining us. Uh, I hope that was really insightful. And yeah, if you have any questions, you can always reach out to us. Um, you can email me, sales at bpampered.ca. And yeah, thank you all for joining. Bye. You guys are feel free to log out. Or if you have more questions, you can also again jump in and, and ask away. Just wanted to say thank you so much, everybody. Thanks, Barbara. It was so great to see you. Thanks for joining. You're muted, Adele. <laughs> I got cut off there. I said, are we just saying goodbye? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i think so okay. well, yeah everyone's awesome. out okay bye okay bye guys thank you so much